Hello everyone, today was a bit of a nothing burger in the market. We didn't get any sort of big move to the upside or the downside. You could see that we basically made a doji. So dojis are indecision candles. So currently we are in a bullish structure on the SPY immediately, but for us to continue going up, there's still some things that need to happen in today's video. We're going to take a look at the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, the tech stocks. What is driving the market? We're going to take a look at the bonds and the VIX. All right. Also, we're going to take a look at the macroeconomic news for the rest of the week. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at the macroeconomic news for this week. All right. So tomorrow morning. We've got some pending home sales numbers coming in at 10 a.m. So if you've watched my live streams and you've been here with us, um, you know that we don't hold anything through important news during the market hours. So at 10 a.m. we have news coming out. Therefore, we cannot hold any positions. Um, it would be very, very risky. Moves that happen, say, for example, news comes out at 9.45 a.m., 10 a.m., the moves can be very, very dramatic. And if you're holding on to a directional play, it can really rip in the opposite direction. So you don't want to be caught holding that stuff. All right. So there's the news for Wednesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at the news for Thursday. Thursday, we have a lot of important news. 8.30 a.m. pre-market, we have the final GDP numbers. Of course, we have unemployment claims that come out every Thursday as well. And um, more news uh, throughout the day as well. But then at 3.45 p.m., Treasury Secretary Yellen speaks. So 8.30 a.m. prior to the market open, there's news. So we don't really have to worry too much about any news um, during market hours. So it could be a generally comfortable trading day. But then at 3.45 p.m., Miss Yellen is going to give us a nice talking. All right. So that's going to happen for Thursday and then Friday more news <laughs> it's going to be a bit more difficult so more news comes out a pre-market core pce data comes out and um then at night so this is going to be probably one of the most like annoying days to trade so friday um remember we have news coming out at 9 45 a.m for the chicago pmi data and then again at 10 a.m we have more news coming out consumer sentiment so both of these times we should not be holding on to any positions. It is literally a gamble, not safe at all. All right, so there's that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. So the first chart that I wanna take a look at is the tips. So the tips are basically inflation protection securities, and it's a basket of uh, bonds, and the concept is to basically beat inflation. So currently, the tips are giving a higher yield than bonds uh, regular bonds but they're more risky because they're a bit more volatile but in general the tips are a good gauge to see which direction the market is going to go so essentially very very simply what we need to know is that when the tips are going up tech stocks which should mean that the overall market would also be going up so currently we can see that the tips this is a daily chart Things are looking up, right? This is a bull flag. Things are looking bullish, right? We're holding this uptrend. Um, and essentially, you know, it, it looks bullish. It's not going to be as clean on a day to day, but this is not a bearish structure. This is a bullish structure. So if this is a bullish structure, um, we're hanging by a thread here. We're basically at support. This is barely holding support, right? But nonetheless, this is still a bullish structure. Until this starts breaking below 108.50 to 107, then the bullish structure is going to be gone. But for now, technically, this is still a bullish structure, which means that if the tips are bullish, then the NASDAQ should also be bullish. Next, we're taking a look at 30-year bonds. Obviously, this isn't a chart of the SPY, NASDAQ, whatever. This isn't fun to look at, but we need to look at this stuff because this is going to give us a clear understanding of what is happening in the market. It's not as simple as just looking at the stock prices. There is a lot more that's going on under the hood, and it's important for us to take a look at everything holistically. All right. So the 30-year bonds, it's important to look at because they are correlated to the overall market, similar to the tips. So if the bonds are doing well, then the Nasdaq should also be doing well. And the correlation is stronger now than it was um, in the past year. So the bonds still currently holding above this uptrend. Uh, again, bullish structure, bull flag, 
even though we're basically at a level of support unless we start breaking down below then the bullish structure is going to be gone but for now things look bullish on the bonds and they also look bullish on the tips all right now let's get to the fun stuff this is the vix we know that the vix is a very very important gauge on the market if the vix is falling then generally the market is bullish okay there is an a uh, negatively correlated relationship to the market and the VIX. What we need to understand is that as long as the VIX remains below 2150 to 22, basically these two, then the overall market should remain bullish. So currently we are comfortably below uh, this range here on the VIX. Once we start breaking above 25, 26, that's when things can become very, very extremely bearish, right? But for now, as long as it remains below 2150 to 22, things are good. If we start cracking above and we start closing, if we get closes above 23 and 2350 up here, then the momentum is going to be shifting. So if a strong VIX, right? If we start breaking above 23, 2350 with a strong VIX, that means that the market should be falling. So keep that in mind. Currently, the VIX or the volatility is uh, showing weakness, which means that the market should be showing strength. Okay. There's that for the VIX. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the tech stocks. Starting with Apple. So the reason why I'm starting off with Apple is the reason why I'm starting off with tech stocks in general is because over the past few weeks, we've seen banking stocks take a huge hit. We're seeing credit spreads widening. We're seeing interest rates increasing. We're seeing a lot of people not being comfortable holding their money in banks. That's why we're seeing the financial sector taking a hit. So with that being said, tech stocks have are basically on paper they're very very good companies they have very very strong balance sheets and they have a lot billions hundreds of billions of dollars of cash apple is one of the best in terms of uh, cash on hand so apple is obviously a trillion dollar company it's one of the market movers so we're going to start off looking at apple so i took a fib level from the most recent lows in january to the most recent highs a few days ago and we can see that things are still comfortably, comfortably bullish. What you can also do to find trends in the overall trajectory of the stock, uh, something that you should do is look for the um, look for the swing lows and try to see which line basically connects to everything. So on trading view, right, you could come over here, click trend line and basically hold control if you have a windows and you click here which is the most recent lows right and you want to connect it to uh a trend line and see basically if that trend line has multiple touches and it's in if it's been respected right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect it to this trend line from uh the bottom of march 2nd and you can see that whenever we get close to this trend line so number one we had this first touch right obviously these were touches as well but it, i mean that's not really that important but then once we got this other touch over here in the middle of march we got another bounce so currently we're still in an uptrend and this still has more room to fall but as long as it remains above this uptrend things are still bullish what people could be doing right now is especially since um it's broken it's extreme uptrend so something that you also uh, know that i like to do is um, when we have like extreme moves to the upside, when there's extreme, extreme strength, if that uptrend is broken, it's very easy to just go short. Once the uptrend gets a close below um, the level. So this is an extreme case. This is an extreme scenario of an uptrend, right? Once we get a one day close outside of this uptrend, which we currently can see that, right? We usually have another day where it follows through to the downside. So this so today was that day where we followed through to the downside on Apple. You can see um, how we got this close and it continued down lower. Now, right, there is a lot more room to the downside than there is to the upside on Apple. Um, it's very difficult, especially given the landscape of everything, to, to be extremely bullish on the overall market. So I'm expecting a lot of people to be short against these wicks and against these highs so 
wicks, right? Uh, when we have wicks like this to the upside, it's not generally a bullish sign because it means that we couldn't close above any major levels. So for example, um, anytime we get a wick at a level of resistance, it usually follows through to the downside afterward. It doesn't need to be immediately, but it shows that there is a lack of follow through. So for example, we have this big wick here. The next day it was red, right? Big wick here. The next few days were red. Big wick here, obviously we know that it fell. Big wick here, obviously we know that it fell. So the fact that we're getting these wicks at levels of resistance is not a good sign for Apple, but we're still currently above on the uptrend. Today was sort of really like a nothing day, but um, if 155 and 156 can hold a support and we can start to solidify some sort of ground here, then Apple can bounce up. But um, the tips are showing some strength. The VIX is still showing weakness. So it should be good to go in terms of, you know, a bounce as long as 155 holds, in my opinion. The other bullish thing on Apple is that the MACD indicator is oversold. So when the MACD indicator is oversold like this, it means that there's generally more room to the upside. So we did get a cross down below. And once we get a cross down below, it should continue falling for at least one to two days. So this is the first day after the cross. and. If we fall down lower tomorrow, which we could, all right, 155 needs to hold. But I'm going to also give a bullish case. But currently, this is the overall outlook for Apple. Next, we should take a look at the rest of the tech stocks. Amazon, it doesn't move as plainly as a tech stock, but it is also a more economically sensitive stock. That's why it's not as, you know, it's not a plain tech SaaS company. Um, so I also did a fib level from the most recent lows to the most recent highs. We can see that the Amazon is pinned around the 50% fib level. And you can currently see that it's still in a bull flag here. So this is still a bullish structure on Amazon. Things look bullish. We can take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft is one of the leaders, right? Microsoft is very, very bullish. I also did a fib level from the most recent lows to the most recent highs. Microsoft is holding not the 50% fib. It's holding above the 23.6% Fib, which is showing a lot of strength. So Microsoft has always been one of like the stronger tech companies. And whenever I would go long, I would always lean more long on Microsoft or Nvidia uh, because they would basically like sort of do their own thing. They would be much more strong. So we could also see that on the MACD, Microsoft uh, cross down below on the MACD. And in my opinion, as long as this remains above the 38.2% FIB at 269, things should hold and we could continue upwards. But once again, from a trading perspective, I would be very, very shocked to see this continue up in a dramatic way, especially at the end of the week, we have that JP Morgan collar trade. And the top of that trade is 4065 on the SPX. So I would be very, very surprised to see Microsoft make an overshoot. But that is possible given the fact that we are holding support we're in a bullish structure if in the morning we end up getting some sort of bullish move in the pre-market we're going to lean long all day in terms of uh, day trading things should be good so microsoft clearly looks very very bullish tesla tesla doesn't look that great compared to microsoft or the chips right but tesla also is in a bullish structure it's holding above the 23.6 percent fib which is still good nvidia amd it doesn't even it, we don't even need to put um you know a fib level on these because things are still holding really really well as long as 256 can hold on nvidia this can continue moving up uh again the wicks the wicks on these chips are very very telling they're always really really telling on um the chips so all you do so from a trading perspective really what you need to do is as long as we're not very very closed away from a wick you go short you really you just go short with a stop loss at the top of a wick so what you could do is you could take like a comfortable like safer trade with a longer expiration date and this generally always works out you give some time on the expiration on the contracts and stuff uh the contracts always end up working in your favor even if you were to buy um shorts over here for two weeks out this would end up being positive and profitable today with a stop loss at the top of the at the top of the candle you, you were never stopped out so 
Nvidia and AMD, these chip stocks are really easy to swing and trade. Um, I feel like they're very, very heavily manipulated as well. And it's easier to, <laughs> to trade something that's more manipulated because it's more um, predictable. AMD, oh, whoops. AMD, uh, doesn't, it's not as parabolic as Nvidia. So you can see that AMD is still holding the 38.2% FIB. Things look, you know, things are still holding, right? But this is not a completely bullish structure. This is, it looks like, <laughs> this structure, it looks like basically someone tried to, like a siege weapon into a door, right? They're battering ram into the door and it failed. And now the soldiers are pulling back. So it's not that bullish. Oh, basically, we need to see if, the 38.2% fib somewhere between the 50 and 38.2 can hold and continue up and for another piercing move into the door or the gate that they're trying to do but yeah not immediately a very very bullish structure uh we can see that the macd also fell so this is the second day after it fell and maybe we start seeing a bounce in the chips tomorrow so let's see next let's just go ahead and take a look at the nasdaq so the nasdaq we took a look at all the tech stocks things look bullish things are holding up pretty nicely the nasdaq immediately broke an extreme trend line right to the upside if you just have that trend line and um basically as we close below the trend line as long as you could have a stop loss above it's always generally basically the stop loss is always should be the top of the wick and you give some time especially if you you're waiting for confirmation right if you went short um on this candle right you would want to get something two weeks out or a lotto put and obviously holding some you know the lotto put wouldn't work but the safer trade would be getting puts for two weeks out and then you would need to this would be a starter position you would expect you would hope what you would want to do is you would hope for this to come closer to your stop loss level and your stop loss level is the upper level of this wick you would want it to get to that level again so you could average in and once you get closer to this level cool you get into more puts but if it closes above the wick of the original place that you bought the puts that's when you close out the position so uh the day afterward was another like a really good opportunity to go short again but you can't be afraid if we if you see a big move like this intraday you can't be afraid you have to understand and you have to look at it from the daily perspective you have to look at the overall trajectory where we're showing weakness at levels of resistance when you show weakness at levels of resistance it makes sense to scale into puts so as even intraday as it's showing strength you have to scale into puts as long as your initial stop loss is not breached and what i mean by breached is if it closes above the stop loss it's um yeah so once again the tech stocks it's really really easy to just trade the wicks and you give yourself some time on these trades and um they work out pretty well so once again it looks like the nasdaq is holding very close to the 23.6 percent fib obviously today it held the 38.2 percent fib Things still look like they're in a bullish structure, but we can start really falling lower if buyers do not step in and hold this 38.2% FIB. So um, there is that on the NASDAQ. Next, I wanna take a look at the SPY and really show you guys what levels I'm gonna be looking at for the SPY. And if we get a break above and a break below, what those levels are. All right, so here's a chart of the SPY. We can clearly see that the SPY is all over the place. It's being influenced by the NASDAQ. It's being influenced by the IWM. Uh, the IWM, we just quickly take a look at it. It's completely garbage, right? It's not strong at all, it's right? So we're just gonna hope and wish that the Fed can continue and like bank sectors and everything, the financial sector can get its act together. But going to the SPY, right? The SPY is influenced by the IWM as well as the NASDAQ. So currently we can see that the uh, SPY is trading above the 618% FIB and it's sort of pinned around the 50% FIB. So what I'm looking at is for tomorrow, we need basically a break. If we get a break above 397, we can see 400. We can see if we break above, above 397, 398, we can see 400. 
and if we break below 392 uh, sorry if we break below 394 to 393 we can easily see the 6.8 percent fib once again so we're basically just stuck in this tight range um one of the easiest trades would be is if we get a close above this downtrend level that was created back in february and the level that we would need to close above for tomorrow is going to be 398 399 but again it's very very difficult to hold anything overnight especially since thursday we're going to have very very major news coming out thursday morning so if today if wednesday right if tomorrow we end up getting a very very bullish close it is very very risky unfortunately to hold anything overnight into thursday so please keep that in mind it is not going to be worth it what we can do is we could also take a look at the es i was looking at the levels on the es and similarly on the es if we get a break above 404 on the es we can see 40 uh sorry if we get a break above 403 on the es we can see 405 406 which is going to coincide with a 38.2 percent fib but the thing is, is we basically just need to get very very simply so the es is the s p 500 futures very very simply what we need to do is basically when you zoom into this chat chart right we need to breach at least the 50 percent of this candle with a solid close above and if intraday we get that break above right then we can easily go long and we can follow the momentum to the upside if we end up breaking below and comfortably starting to break below today's lows things are not going to be very very good so um just keep that in mind the nasdaq the spy things should be more bullish because the vix is dying right but they're not so things it looks like the market is really waiting to see what happens with thursday morning news and aside from that uh holding anything overnight tomorrow is going to be very very risky so make sure you hold a shorter position smaller position don't overextend yourself in your portfolio allocation to anything overnight this week and without further ado i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like comment subscribe do all that good stuff and i will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning thank you